Okay, I'm going to say this right off the bat before we get started with the video. Do not do this, especially if you've never soldered on lithium batteries before. It can be dangerous. They can explode, they can catch fire, and you can be severely injured or even death. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hello, I'm Billy, and thank you for stopping by to see my video. The Apple PowerBook 500 series, in my opinion, the most aesthetically pleasing of all the Apple laptops it has ever built. The only thing I didn't like about the PowerBooks is Apple told its engineers to go out and find the crappiest plastic in the universe, and we are going to build laptops out of them. So these things, man, they crack so easily. But once again, beautiful, beautiful laptop. And what we have here is a PowerBook 520C, and that's really appropriate <laughs> because what we have here is an iPad 3 Retina display. Oh, yeah. And internally, <clears throat> what I have is an i5 2.7 gigahertz 13-inch early 2015 Mac Pro. That's right. I was able to fit a 13-inch computer into an 11-inch housing. Yeah. So if you want to see how I did this, please stick around, watch the video, and uh, again, Thank you for showing up. Okay, this was originally going to be a Raspberry Pi project, but uh, I started this project during uh, mid-2020, and we all know what happened that year, and these were being hawked on eBay. For some reason, you could not get these. Well, lack of chips. But uh, these were being hawked on eBay, at least the fours with eight gigabytes, were going for around 240 250 bucks, and that's uh, maybe not Clinton body count numbers, but that's still pretty high, and I was not going to pay that. Absolutely not. I was going to wait till it came down, but I'll tell you what was not going up were broken MacBooks. This is a early 2015 MacBook Pro 13-inch. I was able to salvage the uh, motherboard out of it, the uh, input-output board, the speaker contacts. Those are uh, MacBook Air speakers, uh, the EyeSight camera, and the battery charger um, from the battery pack, which was dead. Anyway, I took a chance, and I paid $37 for the uh, MacBook, and um, it had a broken screen. I got it. I took out everything, and I put the board to an external monitor, and bam, it was working. So I really lucked out with that. And also, I have the mounting, which is the back of the keyboard, uh, for the motherboard attached to a piece of plastic, and you can see I dug trenches in the plastic where the uh, lines go through, so it'll sit nice and flush on the bottom case of the uh, power book. Um, yeah, so anyway, I got the power book, or excuse me, MacBook, and I broke it down and I sold the uh, trackpad and the keys and the top and bottom case. I have no idea why the guy wanted them. Anyway, I sold it locally for like, uh, God, I think I got 55 bucks for it. Now, if you look at the input-output board, you can see where I extended the HDMI connector, and it'll be, uh, you'll have access out the back of the power book. And also, <clears throat> I, I took off the um, USB connector because of the profile. Both of those connectors would not be able to stay in there. I wouldn't have any way to uh, fit the input-output board in the project if I left them on. Okay, if you're wondering why I use the uh, ribbon connector instead of just hacking into a cable, Look how much length that adds to the logic board. Um, I would have to get rid of the fan if I were just going to hack into a cable, and I was not going to do that. I want to go ahead and keep the fan. And here's a modified battery board right here, where you can see where I extended it. Because if I kept it like this, here's an original battery board. Um, if I were to keep it like that, I wouldn't be able to uh, fit it inside the power book. Okay, here is our PowerBook USB conversion. You can see the Teensy, and it's, uh, here's the board where I've soldered on the uh, headers. And we go ahead and it's going to flip over like that. I'm probably just going to take a piece of tape and put it over it. Uh, here's a connector that goes to our uh, trackpad. And here's a USB connector that's going to connect to the input-output board. Now, these are two driver boards for the iPad LCD from uh, Abusemark in Japan. Uh, they make a lot of remote control aircraft parts, and he makes some really neat uh, little 
projects for iPad LCDs. Now, if you look, here's how it originally looked. Um, that one. Uh, it had this uh, display port connector, right? But the problem is when it's too high, I wouldn't be able to fit that inside of the uh, cases or between the LCD and the uh, top case. Um, it would bow the LCD or it would break the uh, display port connector. So I went ahead and I removed it and I soldered on a 20 pin L or ribbon cable connector. Uh, I really like the abuse mark boards because number one, they only need five volts to operate as opposed to uh, 10 to 12 volts for the um, add a fruit board. Um, but the one thing I don't like about it is it has one button for brightness control, which is not a big thing, but uh, now I like traditional up and down buttons. But yep, there it is. Oh, and these are substantially cheaper than the uh, Koala or Koala boards. Uh, I think this cost me around 35 bucks. Uh, and that includes shipping from Japan. Okay, here it is. I got a rough layout. This is everything, uh, just about everything that's going to go into the uh, modification, except for the uh, DS1802 circuit. So I've got my uh, abuse mark driver board set up. We're going to test our trackpad and we're going to test our keyboard uh, USB conversion. And here I have it uh, tied into the input output board of the MacBook Pro. And I have another keyboard plugged in over here just in case this one doesn't work. Yeah. That's it. Let's go ahead and plug in our LCD driver. Let me see we have power. And we're going to go ahead and apply power to our MacBook Pro. And it's going to take a bit, I think. Come on. Come on. Let's speed it up. There it is. All right. Well, how do you like that? Oh, I'm going to test out my camera also. Yeah, look at that. It works. And let's go ahead and test our keyboard. Two. Three, four. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, what did I do wrong? Oh, I put zero. Uh oh. Ah, okay. That means I got a bad connection. That's okay. I know what's wrong with it. And enter. So my keyboard is working. Um, I've just got one loose connector um, that's going to the uh, Teensy. So, well, let's, uh, I forgot to test out the camera. Where's the photo booth? I gotta take some icons off this dock. And oh, we'll get a green light. <laughs> we'll get video. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. Well, hello, handsome. Now we tested out the camera. Let's go ahead and shut her down. Here's the iPad 3 LCD. Yeah, I've got it in the original uh, uh, PowerBook 520 LCD housing. If we look on the back, there you can see the Koala board or Koala. I need to learn how to pronounce that. Um, but anyway, you can look and see the low profile on that after I removed the uh, display port connector and installed that ribbon cable. And also this ribbon cable is going to allow me to go ahead and wrap it around the hinge that's coming up uh, into the uh, LCD housing. Okay, here's some modifications I did to the uh, PowerBook 520 bottom case. So I can go ahead and fit that board in there. I had to cut loose a couple of uh, studs right here, but you really don't need them anymore. Uh, yeah. Here's the uh, two studs I fashioned out of a JB Weld for the uh, HDMI connector, which we're going to be able to access out the back right here. Now, if we look, here is my modified case. I had to cut a little bit of plastic out right here, a little bit out right here, and along the bottom here. And you can see, here's an original uh, case that had for years but uh, you can see how much plastic I had to take off the uh, modified case if you look at the uh, distance between the bottom of the LCD screen and the uh, Apple emblem and then right here yeah you can see how much plastic I took out on the sides I think this was a nine and a half inch uh, screen that was in the uh, original PowerBook um, 520 and of course the uh, iPad screen is 9.7 and here are the modifications I had to do to the uh, chassis. Uh, this is the original chassis, and this is the modified chassis for our power book. Yeah, you can see all that metal I had to remove right there. Oh, I put the uh, on and off switches back here now. You look there. And I incorporated the charge port right here, where the uh, <coughs> floppy drive used to be. 
Okay, I have my LCD installed into the uh, top LCD housing, and I went ahead and installed the old control board, and I ran wires from the uh, driver board over to the old uh, controller, and now uh, I've got these buttons. This one is to turn the LCD on and off, which that means I'm not going to use the, the uh, lid switch anymore. Uh, and this one is down, and this one is up for brightness. Um, yeah, those wires, that spaghetti is really driving me up the wall. But those wires are so thin, if you look at them the wrong way, they break. And yeah, it's nasty. Not Stormy Daniels nasty, but still nasty. Now, since I have the on and off switch here now, uh, I can turn the LCD off. I'm going to go ahead and lay off using the uh, lid switch to cut the power to the LCD when you close the lid. Uh, because I don't know if it's a good idea to run uh, 10 volts and 2 amps through that little switch right there. Uh, I think it might start smoking pretty fast. Oh, while I'm thinking about it, and I cannot believe I forgot to mention this, uh, here is the trackpad ADB for the uh, PowerBook 520. I've got it installed and I've got it modified according to the instructions from Mr. Frank Adams over at his Instructables page. Um, once again, this project would have been impossible if it were not for the help of Frank Adams and the information he has on his Instructables site. So I highly recommend you going in there, over there, excuse me. Uh, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description. So the code for the PowerBook 520 for the keyboard and for the uh, trackpad is on his site also. Well, here I've epoxied the mounting board to the bottom of the uh, power book case. I've installed my battery control and uh, yeah, it looks good. Oh, and the same thing with these wires. That's driving me up the wall. But you might have noticed in another part of the video, it was a different set of wires I had going across there and it looked a lot cleaner. However, the wires were really taunt. And what would happen is all you had to do was jiggle it just a little bit and those wires would break off. So I rewired it. And here I've installed my MacBook Air speakers. Okay, for those of you who are wondering how I'm turning the uh, uh, MacBook Pro on, PowerBook 520, uh, if you look right here, there are the power pads that you can short out and it will turn your MacBook Pro on. So I soldered some of those teeny wires to it. And then I overlaid some epoxy on it. If you want to turn it back on, all you have to do is go back here and hit the switch. Um, for the batteries, I was going to do an elaborate uh, battery tray where I could go ahead and pull it out, unplug it, and shove another one in. But uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead. I shaved all the ribs down on the bottom. And I bought this battery pack new in 2020 for something like a... I know it was under 40 bucks. I want to say it was like 37, 38 bucks, but I left the uh, adhesive on the bottom with the film covering. So all I'm going to do is peel off that film and stick the batteries to the bottom of the case and wired it up. Yeah, I like that. A lot less work. Okay, to create somewhat of a thermal barrier in between my batteries, I have these two pieces of acrylic that I've epoxied into the case. Uh, because if that one starts overheating or this one starts overheating, at least I have some protection there where it won't affect the other batteries. Uh, so I have the acrylic in here. I'm waiting for the epoxy to set. And it's being held down by a 1958 Comco Model 751 pocket knife and a 1944 D-milled M1 Grand service rifle bolt. And if you don't have those, anything of suitable weight will work. Well, there it is. I've wired up my battery and I've slattered the uh, battery compartment with liquid tape. I love this stuff. It's so messy because the applicator on here is huge. Uh, but following my schematic from 2020, which I'm going to get to that in a second, because if you look right here, I'm actually using another battery board. Um, I was not able to use this marvelous example of engineering where I lengthen the wires and use zip ties. Uh, but that's okay. I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so there it is. Now it's time to slap everything together. Okay, before I button everything up on it, let's test the keyboard and the trackpad out. Hit on. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, trackpad's working. Okay, here's one that always gives me problems. Um, two, three, four, enter. <laughs> oh yeah, 
Okay, well, at least the zero key is working. So uh, I'm gonna shut it down and finish slapping it together. And for the first time since 2020, it is time to take the film off. Ha! Here it is, <laughs> all put together. And would you look at that? Absolutely beautiful. Well, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and start it up. Good Lord, that sound <laughs> is positively anemic. Oh, I got to cut the display on. There we go. Yeah, display button. Yeah, that button works. Off, on. <laughs> yeah. I'll go ahead and uh, speed the uh, boot process up. Okay, let's hope it does it short. And return. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh man, look at that. Trackpad's working. Yeah. Battery. What's my battery at? 100% right now. Ah, well, I just took it off the charger about five minutes ago. Um, because I don't have an antenna installed, uh, I, this has to be really, really close to the uh, router. Let's go ahead and test out notes. Ah, I've got a short. Well, that's okay. I know how to fix that. It's just a connector to the Tensi. But <clears throat> it is working, the USB, because the um, trackpad goes through the same wires as the uh, keyboard. So it's just, I've got one grid of keys that has a short. I'll get to that later. But yeah, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. How about, about this Mac? Ah, MacBook Pro Retina 13-inch, early 2015 processor, 2.7 gigahertz i5, memory 8 gigabytes. Oh, yeah. What about displays? Oh, really doesn't say much, does it? Storage, 121 gigabytes. Yeah. All right. Well, I reckon that's it. Uh, I was surfing on it uh, on the net earlier, but uh, I didn't get a video of that. But there it is. Let's go ahead and shut down. Oh, wait a minute. We're about. Look at that. Brightness control. All right. I like it. I like the way that came out. Shut down. And then you can't forget to shut off the display. That's it. That is what I've been waiting to do since 2020. Ah, oh, it's got scuffs. But look at that. Yeah, look at that. Audio, USB, display port. HDMI. Yeah. On and off button. Yep. I like it. Well, that's it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, I'm not going to say <laughs> with any certainty that I'm going to be posting any videos soon. But uh, I do have some upcoming projects. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And remember, it's a scientific fact that children love to fish. So you do yourself a favor and you make a kid's day and you take them fishing. I'm Billy and goodbye.